Church, thank you so much for being here with us today in the room. And those of you that join us online, you're all a part of the Avalon family. And we thank God for you. Thank God for your being here today. Well, let me just explain very briefly for those of you that may be here for the first time or the first time in a while. Uh, we're in this series called Doing Our Part. And what we're doing is we are preparing to move. Uh, by move, we mean move uh, locations, a new facility. And uh, we're looking to buy property and, and a building. And so uh, what we are doing during this campaign is talking about doing our part. In other words, we're challenging people uh, to pray, to see what God would have them to do, and be a part of this move. And our phrase that we're using is that we don't want just to move. We want to see a move of God. And we believe that God is moving in our church and we're very excited about what's going to be happening in the days ahead. Well, today, I want to talk to you about getting out of your comfort zone. Now, how many know what it means to be in a comfort zone? Anybody? you kind of just in your comfort zone when you're at home. You're sitting in your favorite chair. Maybe it's a recliner. Maybe you're in your underwear. Talking to the men, all right. So uh, you're, you're sitting there watching television. You're in your comfort zone zone. Maybe your comfort zone in, includes driving a certain way, a certain uh, street, a certain direction to your work. And when anything messes up that comfort zone, it makes you upset. And you say things that uh, you should not say, especially in church, right? So, uh, but we all know what it means to be in a comfort zone. And there's not, um, it's not always wrong to be comfortable. Okay, we're not suggesting that it's always wrong. We are saying, however, that if you get too comfortable, you need to look at what you need to do to get out of that comfort zone and get into the zone that God wants you to be in. Well, um, I know that we all know what it feels like to be in a comfort zone, and probably most of us know what it feels like to be outside of that comfort zone. Uh, many years ago, I was a youth pastor for about 10 years in the state of Florida. And uh, the church that I worked at was a large church, and uh, we did lots of youth activities. And uh, one year, we took an entire group, in fact, I think it was like two busloads of teenagers to Okefenokee Swamp. Anybody ever been to Okefenokee? You know where that is here in the state of Georgia? Um, well, it, uh, one thing that Okefenokee is famous for is alligators. There are lots of alligators, and uh, so we did the parents a favor and took these kids into the dangerous waters where uh, there are alligators. We did not lose any, thank God, but uh, we had a good time. While we were there, I told them, be careful, don't do anything to tip over your canoe, because alligators, they, if you've got lunch in the, in the boat or whatever, they may come and eat you. And so we really emphasize this to the kids, do not, and, and what I did is I had, all the kids had a canoe, and I had a motorboat, a boat with a motor on it, and it wasn't because I was lazy, it was because <clears throat> half our kids did not know how to canoe, and I spent most of my time grabbing a hold of these girls' canoes and pulling them back up with the motorboat back to the group so that they didn't get lost. Well, we had two boys, especially uh, in, in the group that were with us that they were not satisfied with just a canoe trip. They decided they wanted to make it a little bit more adventurous. And so these two boys put their feet on both sides of the edge of the canoe and they stood up and with their oars, they were sword fighting. All right, so you get the picture. Now, how many of you know that when a boy turns 13, uh, he loses half of his IQ points and uh, he loses all of them the time he was 16, right? So these two boys were about 16 years old. They were standing on the edge of their canoe. They were sword fighting with canoe paddles when, you guessed it, they fell into the water. We're talking about alligator infested water. And uh, as soon as they hit the water, there was an alligator that was on the bank that hit the water going right toward them. Now, I got to be honest with you, I'd never seen anybody walk on water before. All right, these two boys, I don't know how they got into my boat that quickly. I do believe they did walk on water for a little bit, but 
it was amazing. It was a miracle. They got in the boat. Now, I kept saying to the boys, not just the boys, but the girls. Girls didn't really have a problem so much. They stayed in the boat. But I kept saying to the boys on this trip, stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. I repeated it again. Stay in the boat. Now, there were many reasons. It was a swamp. Um, didn't want any kid to drown, but it was alligator infested. Stay in the boat. Well, the fact is, when it comes to living the Christian life, I don't believe Jesus wants us to stay in the boat. I believe he wants us to get out of the boat and out of our comfort zone so that we can serve him better. Now, the story we're going to read today, uh, I think, illustrates this. Matthew 14 uh, took place one day in the life of Jesus. He had just gotten bad news about his cousin, John the Baptist, being martyred. And he decided to go to a solitary place to pray and reflect. And as he was going, people heard about where he was. And they went to see him. And he started healing people, and that day was when the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, that was men, uh, not including women and children, probably somewhere around 15 to 20,000 people total uh, were there that day that Jesus, with one little boy's lunch, five loaves, two fish, he fed 15 to 20,000 people, and it was certainly a miracle. And after supper, he told his disciples to get into their boat and to go on the other side of the lake. So that's the setup, and we're gonna read the boat story here. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 36. And immediately after this, Jesus made his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake where he sent people home, while he sent people home. And afterward, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. I don't know if you've ever been in trouble before. I don't know if you've ever felt like you were far away from the safety of what your comfort zone was. Uh, but these people, these men, these disciples were in trouble. They were far away from the land. They were afraid and they were in trouble. At about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on the water. Don't you like how matter of fact some things are in the Bible? Oh, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus just came walking on the water as if this was an everyday occurrence. Jesus just at 3 a.m. started walking on the water. They're struggling. They think they're going to drown. They think their boat's going to capsize. And Jesus is just merrily walking along the water. He is God, so I guess he can do that, right? So about 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him, they screamed in terror, thinking he was a ghost. I get that. I get that. How many of you think you probably would have screamed if you were there? You saw somebody walking on water? You guys are a bunch of liars. I mean, the, the fact is, you ain't that brave. I know it. You get afraid when the little bug gets on you. And if you saw someone walking on the water, you'd be terrified. I would too. I'd be terrified. But Jesus spoke to them at once, saying, it's all right. He said, I am here. Don't be afraid. And then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you by walking on the water. And I love Peter. He is so, he just so, he speaks before he thinks a lot of times. Um, I, I love this guy. He, he loved God with all of his heart, but sometimes he stuck his foot in his mouth. Sometimes he got in trouble. And he said to the Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you by walking on the water. Can I just say this? And I don't think scripture is stupid. I don't think, um, I, I have a very high view of scripture. Uh, we as a church believe that the word of God is for us. It's inspired by God. But this may be one of the dumbest statements I've ever read in the Bible. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to get out of the boat and come to you on the water. Well, if it was a ghost, if it was somebody that wanted to do them harm, of course he would have told him to get out of the boat because he would drown. Well, look at what Jesus said. He said, all right, come. 
Come on. Jump in, Peter. The water's fine. I'm walking on it. You come on, and you walk on it too. And so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. This is not a part of my message, but I just got to say, if you are ever going to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. And there are a lot of people in their Christian life, all they want to do is stay in the boat. The boat's a good place to be. The boat is a place of safety. The the boat is a place, a place of comfort. The, the boat is a place that we are used to. We like being in the boat, but sometimes God calls us to get out of the boat and to walk on water. And I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever going to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. And that's what God's calling us to do. Get out of the boat. Walk on water. Do something that hasn't been done before. Do something that when people look at it, they say, man, God must have been involved in that. And that's what I pray uh, and believe that this church is and will continue to be. And we're going to get better and better at it. We got to get out of the boat and walk on the water. That's what Jesus has called us to do. But Peter, when he looked around at the high waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Can I just say this? Anytime you get out of the boat, anytime you take a risk for God, anytime you start something new that you know that God has called you to do, but you don't know how it's going to work, it's terrifying. It can be afraid. You can be afraid during this time. And, and it's not easy. And if you begin to take your eyes off Jesus, like Peter did, when he looked around at the high waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Now, I don't know about you, but there have been many times in my life that I felt like I was sinking. I felt like I wasn't going to make it. I felt like that maybe it was over. I, I felt like that there's no way I could continue to go forward. I, I felt like that maybe all hope was lost. You ever been there? You ever had that kind of experience? You ever had that kind of feeling? You ever been afraid like that? Well, every Christian has. And anybody that's going to walk on water you got to get out of the boat. You can't stay in the boat and walk on water at the same time. you got to be willing to take that faith risk. But here's what I love. Whenever we take a faith risk, whenever we step out of the boat, do you know what Peter did? He did something that the only other person in the history of the world that was Jesus Christ who made the water, who made the waves, who had power over all matter, all of creation, all of nature. Peter's the only other person to walk on water. He had great faith, but notice what he did. He began to sink and he said, save me, Lord. You know, not every prayer needs to be really long. Sometimes the most effective prayers can be just like what Peter prayed right there. Save me, Lord. I'm in trouble, God. Help me. And he did. And instantly Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed him. You don't have much faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? And I, I've got to be honest. This is a puzzling scripture to me. I know that when it comes to having faith in Jesus, we've got to believe that he can do everything that he can do all, that there's nothing he cannot do, but come on. He is the only other person in the history of the world to walk on water. He began to sink. He said, why did you doubt me? And I guess that's the issue. Because no matter what it is that God has called you to do, no matter what the challenge is that God has laid before you, listen to me, listen, it is about having the faith to trust God Jesus said, why did you doubt me? I don't know about you, but I'm having to be honest. I'm a man of faith. And God has used me in many, many, many faith enterprises throughout my life. But there are times that I doubt. There are times that I wonder where the answer is going to come from. There are times when I don't know the answer. All I know is that Jesus is in control. I can keep my eyes on him. I, I can trust him that even in the middle of my storm, even in the middle of the time that I feel like I'm about to sink and drown, 
he's there. And I can trust him. And I can depend on him, no matter what the circumstances. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? And when they climbed back in the boat, the wind stopped. And then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. You really are the Son of God. I believe the storm represents our fears. Um, We all have fears in life, don't we? We all have things in life that throw us for a loop. We all have things in life that make us doubt. Uh, We can face the unknown. We can face troubles. And we can face problems that come in our life. I believe the storm represents that. Every Christian, listen, every Christian, no matter how long you've been a Christian, no matter how long you've been a follower of Jesus, whether it's just a few minutes or whether it's several decades, the fact is we are all going to have times that we face fear, that we face the unknown, that we have doubts, but we can trust in Jesus. Let me say that again. We can trust Jesus, no matter what the storm looks like in our life, no matter what we are facing, no matter what our loss, no matter what the danger, no matter what the fear, we can trust him. Amen? Do you believe that, church? Do we believe that today? I think the boat represents our security in this story. It was a real boat, and this is a true story. But for us, sometimes we don't want to get out of the boat. You ever notice that we all like the miracles in life? We all like the stories of walking on water. What an amazing thing that would have been. But you know that for most people, they don't want to get out of the boat. And it's hard to walk on water if you don't get out of the boat. It's hard for you to experience a move of God in your life, uh, life-changing faith, if you're not willing to take a risk, if you're not willing to get out of the boat, if you're not willing to call, follow the call of Jesus in your life. Yeah, I've been there. Sometimes the boat represents our security. Sometimes it represents our comfort zone. And sometimes it represents what we can do by ourselves. And I got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there have been many times in my life, because I'm a follower of Christ, because I've committed my life to him, because I've given my life uh, to being a pastor, there have been a lot of times in my life that I kind of figured that I got this, God. You ever been there? Oh, I got this. I'm not worried about it. We don't pray about it. We don't trust God. We don't ask him for direction. Oh, no, I got this. I'm good, God. And then we start to sink, just like old Peter He walked on water, the second person in the history of the world to do it, but he got his eyes off of Jesus and onto his circumstances, the waves. I wonder what that feels like to walk on water. I mean, you know, you kind of, it wouldn't hurt to fall, right? That wouldn't hurt. Um, It would would hurt to sink and drown, but the truth is, it would be kind of fun, right? But He became the second person in the history of the world to walk on water because he got out of his comfort zone. He said to Jesus, if it's really you, tell me to come toward you. And I believe that God is calling us as a church, as individuals, to get out of the boat and to walk on water. You see... Walking on water represents something that you cannot do physically by yourself. Walking on water represents a move, an act of God in your life. You see, I'm not capable of walking on water, and neither are you, but with Jesus, we can. God is calling us as a church to get out of our comfort zone and to walk on water. You see, when we begin to follow him, our security does not become the boat anymore but it becomes him. And I got to tell you, in a storm, I'd rather have Jesus on my side than a good sturdy boat on my side because the boat can sink. The boat can go under, but Jesus is right there with you. And when he is, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Sometimes we get through our worldly and earthly eyes, we get things backwards. We think the safety is in the boat, but oh no. The safety is with Jesus. The safety is with him. And a lot of times, 
we don't want to get out of our boat because we're in a comfortable place in life. We are used to our routines. We're used to the TV shows that we watch. We're used to what we do with our time. We're used to what we like to do with our lives. But God is calling us as a church and as individuals to take a step of faith and to get out of the boat. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. And by the way, you can't do that by yourself. It takes the power of God in your life. It takes the surrender of God. It takes saying yes to Jesus in order to do that. Jesus told Peter to get out of the boat. He could not walk on water by himself. He had the help of God. And I believe with all my heart that's what God is calling me to do. And that's what God is calling you to do. It, re- it doesn't really matter if there's a campaign going on for us to move. The fact is God wants you and me to walk on water. He wants us to get out of the boat. He wants us to get out of our comfort zone so that we can make a difference and an impact on this world. Um, I believe that God wants us to use our gifts for him. Let me just give you five thoughts. They're not very long. Five thoughts. A lot of, I do this a lot of times. I've spent a lot of time on the introduction and a shorter amount of time on the points. But I want you to get these things that I believe will help you to walk on water. They will help you, metaphorically speaking, in your walk with God to walk on water. Number one, great testing and great victory often accompany each other. I want you to understand that. Anytime you try to take a step of faith, there's going to be great testing in your life. Anytime you try to obey God, there's going to be a time of testing. It could be your family. Your family may try to discourage you. It it could be some friends that try to discourage, oh, you shouldn't do that. That's too much. That's too far. Uh, They expect too much of you. Don't do that. But I believe God wants us to get out of the boat. Great testing often accompanies great victory. And I've noticed this in my own life whenever I have a spiritual high, that not long after that, I'm vulnerable. I'm vulnerable to temptation. I'm vulnerable to discouragement. And I believe you will be too. But great testing and great victory often accompany each other. And so be aware of that, because whenever you try to take a big step for God, the devil's going to try to discourage you. Number two, you are never alone during your storms. You are never alone during your storm. And I love that. These disciples, it was three o'clock in the morning. They had been struggling all night. They needed a miracle. And Jesus came walking on the water. You know what that tells me? I'm not alone during my struggles. I'm not alone during my times of discouragement. I'm not alone during my times of temptation. God promised to be right there with me. And you are never, ever alone during your storms. Number three, and this is just kind of obvious, I believe, if you're going to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. Now, that may be an oversimplification, but I, I like simple. Um, the church that I grew up in where my family really began to serve God, uh, it was an old country church, and he had all kinds of sayings like that. He said, he said this, and I'll never forget it. He said, the reason some of you don't ever get called to do anything is because you ain't within calling distance. And I wonder in our lives, as a church, as individuals, let me ask you this question. Are you within calling distance? Are you within calling distance? You see, God's calling every one of us. It's just that sometimes we don't hear. Sometimes the noise of our schedule blocks out the voice of God. Sometimes the busyness of our life causes us not to see how God is working. And I wonder today, are you willing to get out of the boat 
If you're going to walk on water, if you're going to see God do a move in your life, if you're going to see God save your husband, your wife, your children, your family, your parents, if you're going to see God do a miracle in your life, you got to be willing to get out of the boat and take a risk. You know what that's called? It's called faith. And the Bible tells us without faith, it is impossible to please God. Not unlikely, not more difficult, impossible. If you want to serve God, you got to have faith. If you want to walk on the water, you got to get out of the boat. What is it that the boat represents? Security, routine, no change. You know, it's funny, the older I get, the more I get stuck in routines. And if we're not careful, um, I heard one preacher say it this way, um, a, a rut you get in a rut, he said, a rut is just a grave with both ends knocked out. And if we're not careful, we'll get in a rut in our life because we're, we're not operating by faith. We're not willing to take a risk and get out of the boat. But if you're going to walk on water, if you're going to see God use you in a mighty way, if you're going to see the unexplainable happen in your life, you've got to get out of the boat. Number four, you must always keep your eyes on Jesus. And that's kind of obvious, I believe. Uh, Peter is the only other human being in the history of the planet to walk on water. Now think about that. Uh, if you're in the company of Jesus and the only two people in the history of the world that have done something is you and Jesus, you're in pretty good company. But the truth is, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus, even if you just do something great. Even if you do something that is miraculous, you got to keep your eyes on Jesus. I wonder how many of us have failed the test. Oh, I'm not talking about a test in school. I'm not talking about an algebra test. But I wonder how many of us have failed the test because we didn't get our eyes on Jesus. We failed the faith test because we looked at our circumstances not Jesus. It's really easy to get our eyes off of Jesus, isn't it? But if you're going to have success, you've always got to keep your eyes on Jesus. And then finally, number five, the last point. Faith plus worship leads to boldness. Faith plus worship leads to boldness. I love what happened here in the last part of the passage that we read. Jesus got in the boat with them. He saved them. He calmed the storm. And then he said, why didn't you really have faith? Why did you doubt? And if we're not careful, we won't have the faith. But I love what they did. The disciples then worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. You really are the Messiah. Well, Faith plus worship will always lead to boldness on your behalf. And that's why I want to challenge you during this time that you will have the faith to trust God for whatever he leads you to do in this campaign, in your life, serving him. Take a risk of faith. Take a step of faith. And I believe God rewards that. Faith plus worship leads to boldness. I wonder if you have doubts about something in your life. I wonder if you have difficulty believing that God is going to be the one that's going to answer your prayers. Well, the Bible is very clear that faith plus worshiping Him will lead you to be bold. It will lead you to having more boldness than you've ever had before. And that's my challenge to you is that you will allow God to help you to be bold and to take a step of faith that you've never taken before. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. And I thank you for how you love us. And I thank you, Jesus, that you died for us on the cross. And Lord, I pray now for every person here today that you'd help us all to put our eyes on you, to trust you with all of our heart. And Lord, I pray for those that are here today that maybe are not followers of Christ, that today would be the day 
that they trust you. Before we finish our prayer, I wonder if there'd be anybody that would say, Pastor Richie, I'd like to trust Jesus today. I'd like to receive him as my Savior today. If you would like to do that, say something like this in your heart. If you're at home watching, um, say it out loud. Dear Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I am receiving you today as my Savior. If you'll say that prayer to God, he promises that he'll save you. I wonder if there's anybody today that would say, Pastor, today, I pray to trust Christ as my Savior. And I'd like you to know about it. Would you just lift your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it? High enough and long enough. Thank you. I see your hand. Please take a moment and fill out the card so we can follow up with you. Anybody else? Pastor, I pray to receive Christ today. If you did that online, please hit that button and let us know that you pray to receive Christ today. There may be others that say, Pastor, I've already been saved. I'm a Christian, but I need prayer to take my next step, to be bold, to get out of the boat. Whatever it is that God is dealing with you about, you need help to get out of the boat. I wonder if there'd be anybody that would say, Pastor, that's me. Raise your hand high enough and long enough for me to see it. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you'd help us all to get out of the boat and to take a step of faith that you want us to. Empower our people. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that you're here today. We want to encourage you to take your next step. If you're new to Avalon, please fill out one of these next step cards so we can help you uh, take your next step. Um, if you'd like to go through our next step class or join our church, um, that's next Sunday. Uh, during the 1030 service, and you can be a part of that as well. If you'd like to be baptized or uh, you pray to receive Christ, please uh, fill out this card and let us know uh, that you did that today. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Let's pray, and then we've got some very, very important announcements to make. I want you to stay in place for just a moment. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Help us today to trust in you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to recognize Brian. Uh, Brian's one of our elders, and he's leading uh, this campaign. Let's give Brian a hand as he comes today. Well, good morning, Avalon Church. Thank you, Pastor Richie. So we're going to transition into the segment of the service where we focus on giving. And over the past couple weeks, as part of our Doing Our Part campaign, we've had some giving testimonies. We're gonna have another one of those today. It's gonna be a very special one. We are gonna have two children from the Avalon Kids Ministry come up and help us with a giving campaign testimony. So please welcome to the stage, Jonah and Scarlett Eisenhower. All right, so Jonah and Scarlett, I'm gonna ask you guys a couple questions about giving. So question number one, why do you think it's important to give to God? Um, it helps the church, and my sister is going to tell you more. So we can have fun events, worship nights, serve missionaries, and have mints in the lobby. All right, well, great. So why do you, or what do you like about giving to God? It's God's money in the first place, and it helps the church. And what would you guys like to tell the grown-ups in the room about giving? If your treasure is physical treasure and you are keeping it for yourself, then you're not using it for God's intended purpose. If it wasn't for God, you wouldn't have the money in the first place. Matthew 6, 21. For where your treasure is, is there your heart will be also. Well, thank you, Jonah and Scarlett. Thank you very much for what you had to say about giving. Also, thank you to their mom, Michelle, for holding their mic for them, being the mic. 
All right. Well, thank you very much. If you guys are in the kids' ministry and came to join in, you're welcome to go back to your room for pickup. If you would like to give today, we have several ways to give. They are up on the screen. It's the usuals. We go through them every week, but you can text the amount that you want to give to 84321. You can give online at avalonchurch.net forward slash give. If you're in person in the auditorium, you can go to the drop box by each exit and put your gift there. If you see right in front of you on the chair, there's a QR code. You can take your smartphone, you can scan that. It'll give you information about giving. And then finally, there is a kiosk in the lobby that you can use to give as well. All right, well, let me, um, this is the part where I'm gonna have to refer to my notes. We're gonna close down today with many, many announcements for our doing our part campaign. And I'm afraid that's probably more than my brain can probably remember. So I'm gonna refer to my notes. First of all, the banquet, our banquet is gonna be on May 23rd at 5.30 p.m. Now, the banquet is a place where you're gonna learn more about the building that we wanna purchase, and you'll also have the opportunity at that banquet to give financially to our campaign. Now, it is super important that if you are a member of Avalon Church, you're at that banquet. This is a real tipping point for our church. We want everybody there so you can experience the vision of what, you're trying, what we're trying to do. So again, that's May 23rd, 5.30 p.m. Now, you get to come to the banquet. I'm sorry, I think somebody just showed me it was 5 p.m., so sorry about that, 5 o'clock p.m. I think we're actually beginning to eat at 5.30. If you wanna to come to the banquet, then you have to buy a banquet ticket. So we're selling those today. Um, if you're, actually, if you're manning a ticket booth, this is probably a good time for you guys to go back to the tables so that we're ready to, uh, for people to purchase the tickets. The tickets are $1 and that is a cash transaction. So a dollar bill, quarters, whatever you've got, we'll take those, uh, but they're $1 a piece. Um, when you buy a ticket, you are gonna volunteer to bring either a side dish or a dessert to the banquet as well. So keep that in mind as you go up, you're gonna volunteer to do one or the other. The ticket itself is kind of two parts. You have a portion that you'll keep that you actually uh, are gonna be able to write down what you volunteered, whether that's a, a side dish or a dessert. And then we'll keep a piece so we have a record of the fact that you bought that ticket as well. Uh, next week, if you're not prepared to purchase a ticket this week, next week, we're gonna give you two opportunities, one before the service and one after the service. And if for one some reason that's not convenient for you, anytime during the week, Monday through Thursday, you can also come up and purchase a ticket as well. All right, friends and family invites. So we introduced a concept last week and actually started giving these out. If you know of someone that doesn't go to this church, but you still think they might be interested in giving to our campaign, we have invitations that you can pick up when you purchase your ticket. And the way that works is you essentially identify this person, you address it and send it through the mail to that person, and then they will RSVP to you if they intend to come. And what we're suggesting is if you've got one of your friends and family that you've invited and they say they wanna come, you purchase their ticket for them. That way we have a record of the fact that they're gonna to come to the banquet. That just helps us for planning for food and such. So friends and family invites, you have the opportunity to pick those up as you purchase your ticket. Number three, our 24 hour prayer service. So if you would like to sign up for the 24 hour prayer service, in the lobby, there's a table where you can do that. That begins 7 p.m. on Friday the 21st and then ends on Saturday at 7 p.m. So that's our 24 hours. Uh, you can sign up for a 30 minute time slot. Now, one thing that was a little confusing for people, this is a service in name only. If you sign up for the 2 a.m. slot, nobody's expecting you to come up here to the church and pray. You're gonna do that at your house, okay? So it's a service in name only. You're gonna pray at your house if you sign up. One thing that is a live prayer service is the Monday prayer service that we have. And we're gonna have another one of these on Monday. Uh, we've had two already. You have two opportunities. If you would like to come up and pray live on Monday from 12 to one, if you're available then you can come up and pray for an hour or however long that you want to. And then if the daytime's not good for you, we'll have somebody up here from seven to 8 p.m. in the auditorium and you can come up and pray then as well. All right, so I think that is everything. 
I uh, appreciate you guys coming. If you could stand before we leave. So again, we want to say thank you to all of our moms. Happy Mother's Day. Pray that you guys have a great rest of your day. We will see you back here again next week. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.